Welcome to the Bushy Road Y Shores and Market Update for November 7th, 2021. A lot happened this week, so let's begin. I want to give a big thanks to Audrey Sampson, who had a live discussion with me this past Wednesday. We talked about players, collectors, investor, LGS flippers, all the issues surrounding the community, and just talk about the different groups in general. This video is three hours long. It's available for you if you want to check it out. The whole goal of the discussion, again, was to understand each side a little better. And I believe we achieved that. It was a great conversation that we had. I also want to thank the wonderful people that came out to watch the live and give their opinions as well. If anyone else would like to do this, please email me. The description has my email information. And I just want to reiterate, this is an important point that this isn't a debate or anything like that. This is just people talking about issues and seeing anyone else's perspective. Apparently this game was fun just for me. So last week during the market update, if you saw the intro, what had happened was there was a clip of Jigsaw that came on the screen. And the whole reason that happened was because I had a game created. I, I made my own game. And what happened there was I had a friend come over, she stayed the night, and we stayed up watching horror movie after horror movie after horror movie, and it was an awesome time, and I'm like, I became a TCG player affiliate, which then I wanted to do a giveaway. The thing with giveaways is I don't want to just say it's a giveaway because I don't want people just to sub or like a video just because there's a giveaway. I really just want to give back to the people that watch me. So what had happened was Jigsaw came on saying he wanted to play a game and then I changed the actual title screen that I had into like some bloody frame and if you notice in the bottom right is a letter. A letter appeared down there. So throughout the video I scattered a bunch of different letters there. I was hoping that someone would find it. Whoever would have found it I would have gave a gift card to TCG player. I think I'll try to do this another time, not this one or anything soon, but I really do want to thank everybody that watches this, these videos and support me with, you know, like your kind words and all that good stuff. Really, any giveaways that I look to do really is just for the community that I have. I don't want to just gain tons of people really just because of a giveaway. For my D4DJ fans, at the Bushy Road Global Online Store, there is a D4DJ promo happening right now. If you purchase $30 of D4DJ merchandise by November 14th and subscribe to the Bushy Road Global Online Store, you will be eligible for an online fan meeting. You will be meeting Karen and Risa, who voice Maho and Saki. Unfortunately for me, that is a Thursday night at 11 p.m. I would definitely like to attend, so I may just put in it for a day off for Friday. On the Japanese side of Y Shores, we have more card reveals for Zombie Land Saga. And one of the running jokes was this thing was should have been called Land Saga because there were no cards with actual zombies in them. We finally have reveals for zombie cards, so that joke is now officially over. We have more card reveals for Don Machi, and as you can see, some of the reveals this week is a little more revealing than others. The set comes out on November 26th for the Japanese side. It is coming out in English next year, and that is when I will be making my purchase. Keep that in mind if you want to actually have this set and don't have a ton of money. You may want to just wait for the English release. Pre-orders have officially begun for Mishoku Tensei. This set releases on March 11th and has a trial deck and a booster box. So two things that you'd want to know about this is there is going to be a bunch of people going for that Roxy TD card. Be careful on just buying a ton of trial decks. I've talked about it before on should you invest in trial decks. You see the dangers in it and also the good potential in it. Just make sure you don't go nuts. Second, we are five months out from the release date. So make sure if you do pre-order from anyone, try just to do a deposit, or at the very least, you get a bunch of references for that person. Cause you don't wanna just lose your money, have someone just run away with your money. Be careful. Ruby is coming out on December 17th. I'm a huge fan of Ruby. I love the interaction between the different characters. My hero. My back. 
Great, the gang's all here. Now we could die together. Not if I can help it. This week, the sign cards were revealed. I myself have no issues with any of the sign cards at all. The cards and the signatures themselves remind me this is actually Ruby. So you can say what you want about the art and the signatures. I happen to enjoy them all. Others, however, did not agree with me. Here are a few quotes that I saw from Facebook. Again, I clipped out anybody's name or anything like that. First one was talking about all of the actual cards themselves. And here I thought it was not possible to do even more horrid SPs than the ones from Seven Deadly Sins. You're improving in the wrong direction. The other one said, the cards look awful. The set shouldn't exist in the first place. More than likely, that person probably wasn't going to buy this set anyways. They're just criticizing to criticize. Not everybody is going to like every product that Weiss puts out, so I don't understand the hate for it. Here are some of the more fun ones. They were talking specifically about the Lindsay Jones signature. First one, sign looks like it was made in MS Paint then slapped on over the card. What? This chick doesn't know cursive. What? Instead of changing the card effects, they should change the card signatures. What? Why her signature look like Andy's? What? 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 Where there is bad, there is always good. So here are some of those comments. Looks decent to me, not exactly a banger like other signatures, but I'll take it over non-signature hot stamps. Say what you want, but I am hyped for this release. Glad I made the pre-orders. Honestly, the signature is on brand for Ruby as a character too. I think it's fine. Oh, Lindsay. Lol. But honestly, I feel like if I ever signed a card, it would turn out the same. One other comment. Her signature is fine. It lines up with other things she has signed. Here is the Ruby card for Y Schwarz. And now if you take a look at these two examples, you can see the signature pretty much matches. That is how she signs. It is nothing crazy or out of the ordinary for her. It is definitely acceptable if you are a Ruby fan that this is how it is meant to be. My last thoughts on this is I don't understand what is the whole criticism here. She is a voice actress. She's not pretending to be a professional at signing her name. That is not what she's doing. I know a lot of people out there in the world don't have really nice signatures. What I used to do in college was have people draw me pictures. This comes from some of my friends. As you can see here, she killed the math quiz, but she signed her name without actually using any sort of cursive. It's a nice signature overall. And here is another friend that drew something for me. You can see her signature there. She is, it's pretty nice, but hard to actually see the letters. And this last person, you can see down there, it's pretty nice. It has hearts and all that, but it's not actually in cursive either. So what I'm trying to get at is I know a majority of people out there would love to have nice signatures on their cards, pretty signatures, little drawing and all of that. But the majority of people in the world don't actually have that kind of signature and they're not sitting around just practicing it. I think it's one of those ones where it is better to have a signature then just have a foil non-signature. How many people really want a Magia record, Kaguya, or SAO situation? Do you really want that in the end? If you met her at a convention and had something signed, can you imagine that? You actually get her to sign something, you're like, oh my god, it's nice to meet you, and you go all through all this stuff about what you like and, and want to talk to her, and then she signs it, and she you, you get it back, and you're like, what's the signature? <laughs> That's awful. That's super disrespectful. I don't understand why. Everybody has, there's an issue with this. That's your signature. We're gonna have to live with it. If you paid attention to the date, the bonus bucks promo lined up with the release of Sword Art Online Alicization Volume 2. We're gonna do some math in a few moments, but we're gonna light out everything that happened with the bonus bucks. TCG Player gave you 15% store credit back on any item that you were to purchase. The max credit that you got per item was $50. 
your goal really was then to buy items at max $334 if you were just thinking about getting this credit. Some crafty individuals figured out that they could buy SAO Alicization 2 boxes for a really low price and cash in on the bucks. These numbers do not include tax and shipping, so we have $58 for a box of Sword Art Online. With the credit, that brings it down to $49.30. If you buy 16 of those, that would give you a case price of $788.80. If you were to just buy a straight up case of SAO, you'd be looking at $1037.50. With the credit, you'd get the max of 50, bringing you down to $987.50. The per box amount was $61.72. The one danger with this buying individual boxes like that person that bought 32 of them did, was the potential that you may not have had a sealed case. There's no guarantee that you would have gotten a sealed case or a sealed master case unless you reached out to the seller themselves. In the end, this was an awesome way to save a bunch of money on these. If you were gonna tear them open or even just resell, if you're gonna go that route with it, $49.30 per box was an amazing deal. SAO Alicization Volume 2 is all about the shiny stuff. If you haven't been paying attention, all the low rarity stuff, playable cards, is low. And the reason for that is people are freaking shiny hunting. They are looking for serial numbers, SPs, OFRs, and it is definitely being reflected. People are paying outrageous amounts of money for this. I know when serial numbers were first announced, people thought it wasn't the greatest of things. That this wouldn't be worth anything. A number is not going to affect anything. We knew, myself, Audrey, you know TCG, and a bunch of other people knew that these things were going to be worth something, especially when you slap it on a set that has memorable characters, a huge fan base. It was always going to happen this way. Magia Record, as thought, it wasn't as popular and the serial numbers didn't do as much. The hunt for the serial numbers is crazy. I have some footage that shows people just going nuts on actually opening these boxes up. There are only four tickets left in the whole world, and the whole ruddy world's hunting for them. What can I do? I got it! I got it! I got it! This is a special PSA for the SPs on TCG player dealing with this set. I want to go back to Magia Record anime set where there were serial numbers as well. On TCG Player, there was only one listing for the SPs. The Felicia only got one. Even though there was a serial number version, there was only one listing. Sellers would have to actually take a picture and write in the description what number of serial number it was. Like number 3 or number 5. With SAO Volume 2, TCG Player has a serial and a non-serial SP version. However, some people are not realizing this and putting up the non-serial version and the serial SP and vice versa. Some buyers could be buying these cards like the Asana at $50 hoping that it was a horrible mistake. You know in reality they actually do have a serial number and they're just throwing it up there because they have no clue how much it's worth. I don't know what's actually going on how people are getting these cards. I, I feel like they're sitting there all day just hitting refresh. It reminds me of Neopets. When you wanted to buy something from a shop you would refresh at the zero mark and from there it would set off a chain of all the different stores from for restocking i imagine people are doing the same thing they are literally hitting refresh like every minute five minutes ten minutes hoping that they catch a re a restock on one of these sps and hopefully pick it up at a really cheap price if you are wondering how much these serial numbers are actually going for you have light that penetrates darkness seen on selling for $2,500. This is an actual real sale. It is number six out of 10. You can also go on Facebook as well and take a look at other people offering on these cards. I feel like with this, if Bushy Road is actually watching these, which I believe they are, we will in the future be getting more and more serial numbers. I wanted to show this one. This is Unbending Fighting Spirit Asana. You could see here on November 5th, there was a purchase for $2,000. I was not there at the time. I didn't actually see if the card was labeled that it had a serial number, that picture again, maybe they didn't realize there was a serial number, or they put it up for $2,000 as some of the other cards that I've seen. 
there's other listings that have like outrageous numbers and maybe hoping that people buy this thing and in reality it doesn't have a serial number on it i don't know what happened in this case but again if you are going to purchase this do make sure that this is an actual serial number if it is under the non-serial number version you can pretty much figure this out with me not telling you but what we have here is a double R disaster. What is going on is people are opening these boxes because they want these SPs. They love SAO. They want to find these serial numbers and win the jackpot. And because of that, there is going to be a massive flow, massive supply of double rares and cards beneath it. You are going to have a massive flooding of the market of these base rarity cards. Plus side for people that want to play this set, this thing's going to be cheap. I probably would wait a week or two weeks before I buy any of these cards. I know people are buying these cards during the bonus bucks or even on pre-order. Now that you're seeing all these people open this up, I would definitely hold off from making any single card purchases. As you can see, the double rare average is 451 already and that is only one day. That is only people that are stores that have these things for the most part. And you already have a double rare average of 451. Normally you have it in the fives or sixes or the sevens. This thing is already 451 and it's been one day. Can you only imagine what happens when people actually start getting their boxes next week? It's going to be awful. Just to prove the point, I have a chart here for the double rare playset. SAO Alicization 2 after one day is already $180.40. Slime 2 after three days was $218. Heaven's Field 2, I know it's a little misleading. It says $187.64. That was after four days. Four days wasn't too bad because we knew Heaven's Field was not the strongest of sets. People didn't want it. So it leveled off. It, it did okay. Slime 2 was more popular, more people opened it up, so it drastically dropped after that. But you could already see SAO, Alicization 2, again, with stores really just having this stuff and the mass amount of people don't have this stuff, it's already $180.40. It, it's going to be ugly the next week or two. We're going to take a look at the SP average as well. SAO Alicization 2 after one day is $154.15. The caveat to that is these do not include the serial numbers. These are just the SPs without serial numbers on it. Slime 2, $192.44. Heaven Field 2, $232.13. The most important part about what I'm talking about here is the fact that the SPs are taking a massive hit. And why is that happening? It is because of supply. We know with SPs that they are special. They're awesome. And this time around, there's no signatures, but there are serial numbers. So the major weight of how much SPs are worth are on the serial number side. In order to actually find the serial numbers, you're going to have to tear open a bunch of cases, boxes, whatever you're going to open. And if you're looking for serial numbers, even though there is an SP, that non-serial SP is going to be worth less. And that should make sense. So what's going to happen in here is we are going to get a flood of non-serial SPs. If you were a seller, you need to sell that, I, I imagine, soon. Because once people start tearing open these things to try to get more serial numbers, try to find it, you're going to have a massive influx of these non-serial numbers. As we know with any of these cards, a collector base is only so big. You are going to run into a point where there's going to be a collector or collectors that had enough where they don't need any more of these SPs. Maybe they don't want as many non-serial. Maybe they're trying to get that serial number one. Whatever the case, you are going to have as many as I think that is going to be open, a massive flooding. And you're either going to hold this for long term or you're going to try to sell as soon as you can. I can't tell you which way it's going to go. I just imagine that a lot of this product is going to be open and what you thought you were going to get for an SP to recoup some money back is not going to be as good as you think it will be. Onward to Slime Volume 2. With Slime Volume 2, we have double rares continuing their downward trajectory. And as you can see here, 
all the cards have dropped just a little bit. What we have here is a double rare playset at $98.92. A total playset would be $215.29. Again, I don't update the lower cards like rares or uncommons, commons. I use the opening release, so it actually could potentially be lower than that. But overall, $215.29 is what it's coming in to be at. If you're a player, this is awesome news. If you're a seller, not that great, especially if you are still holding on to some of this stuff. It's going to be harder and harder to get rid of this as more and more sets come out. We know this already. And now, if you are a person that is opening a bunch of SAO Alicization 2, it's not going to be easy either as people begin this whole I need to find as many serial numbers as I possibly can, if you can even. Plus side for me of what happened here is we have an increase on Decapitating Demon Blade Xion. I love that card. I like the I like her signature. So overall I think that was great that she got some respect that the price of it did go up to $180. I think it was like in the 120, 125. It was pretty low. I felt like it should have been higher and overall it has increased and the other ones have just stayed pretty stagnant which makes sense to me because again we now have SAO Alicization 2 and the focus is on those cards. There was a lot of news this week and I want to go in depth on more of the serial numbers, supply sets and all that coming up in the future so be on the lookout for those videos. As always have fun, be happy, and don't buy anything outside of your budget.